Hey guys, it's ESO here and welcome to my new Witcher 3 series. Five details you may have missed in The Witcher 3. From secret bosses to hidden stories, The Witcher 3 is a huge RPG with many missable secrets. But today's video focuses on the starting area of the White Orchard. So subscribe! And let's begin. Okay, so for the first hidden detail you might have missed, it's kind of obvious, but if you have missed it, then you'll think it's really interesting. So in the opening cutscene of The Witcher 3, we see Yennefer fleeing for a battle, and she has with her a magical raven. We then see this raven extinguish itself into a crystal skull that falls to the ground and bounces and lands somewhere on the grass. The camera then zooms into the skull and then fades out to night as we join Geralt, who's been tracking Yennefer. And we can clearly see that the crystal skull is pretty much next to the campsite. And I was surprised to learn that most people miss picking it up. In fact, in my first playthrough, I completely missed it because I didn't think to use the Witcher sensors and I was just looking around for it on the ground. So if you want to go back and grab it for yourself, come east from Wosung Bridge back to the crossroads where we actually start the game. Uh, if I zoom in and show you this on the map first, you can actually see the crossroads and then if we head north, you'll see a brick wall and then on the right of that brick wall, this is where we camped out and that is where you'll find the crow skull. Though it's quite hard to see in the dark. So here again we have the signpost, we run up the hill here, you'll see the brick wall, this short little wall here on the left, then on the right is under the tree where we start the game where the campfire is and you'll notice as you walk down this path there's a little sparkle on the left and that is actually the crow's skull and if you use your witcher sensors it will indeed show up that though i think most people who play this game maybe once or twice they kind of forget about this and maybe they don't use their witcher sensors and it's not immediately obvious to them so i kind of wanted to include it in this list because i thought it was pretty awesome third skull in black crystal why do I think this is Yen's? And rather interestingly, you can actually give Yennefer back the Crystal Skull later on in the game when you meet her. I don't want to spoil it for you, you guys can play through it again and you can see that scene for yourself. You get some additional experience as well, which is kind of nice and kind of rounds out one of those hidden details in The Witcher. But now let's move on to the second detail. Okay, so this second one is one of my most favorite hidden details in gaming history. It's a secret boss that many people will never fight, but basically there used to be a glitch here in the White Orchard in the starting village of Wosong Bridge. There was an exploit at release that is still technically exists today where you would basically kill two cows that spawned just here in this paddock and then they would drop raw meat, cow milk and also cow hide. Now cowhide specifically can be sold for 42 crowns each, so as you can imagine you can rack up quite a bit of gold by doing this repeatedly. And that's exactly what this exploit was. You would simply meditate for 3-4 to four hours in game which takes literally a few seconds and then the cows would immediately respawn and you'd just kill them again. You could very easily farm thousands of crowns using this method right at the start of the game with literally no danger to you, so it did kind of ruin it doing this in a roleplay game until the day the developer CD Projekt Red came up with the most creative way to stop this. They didn't simply patch that the cows would no longer respawn or make them invincible, no. They came up with something incredibly creative. Because now when you have done this three times and killed six cows, a new enemy, the Tort, will spawn in to avenge his cow brethren. Some even refer to him as the cow demon himself. And this secret boss is no joke, especially at a low level if you're trying to get away with an old school farming exploit guide, that is not going to cut it anymore. Even in New Game Plus, he will kill you in two charge attacks if you are not careful with dodging. So the next question is, now we have spawned the demon of the cows, can we kill it this early on in the game? Well, yes, actually we can. If you take him over here to the Nilfgaardian Bridge Guard Tower, they'll actually start attacking him. It will take some time to actually do this using this method, but if you stay out of reach, ideally by putting a giant structure between you and the short, so it just the AI just can't figure out how to get to you, basically, and then you just sit there, maybe even under the bridge for 20 minutes or so, 
the Nilfgaardian soldiers will eventually kill the Chort for you. Uh, it will probably kill many of them in the process, but at least I guess you can loot their bodies. But is it actually worth your time to do this? Well, possibly the most useful thing that you're going to get out of killing the Chort, aside from its skin and some other rare alchemy ingredients and crafting ingredients used to craft relic weapons later on in the game, the Chort will give you a Chort Mutagen, which actually increases your sign power by plus 5%, which is insanely good, especially if you're planning on running a sign build in The Witcher 3. So for our next hidden detail, we must start the quest Missing in Action, which you can pick up from the notice board in Wosong. To start the quest itself though, head over to the ransacked village, east from Wosong Bridge, or south from the crossroads. Now once, once you arrive here, you'll find a man named Dew, who asks you to help him find his lost brother on the battlefield that is now strewn with dead corpses of the Nilfgaardians and the Temerians. You may be wondering why Dune did not make it to the battle, since he is after all a man. But Dune tells us this. Told him, do like I did, lose a finger or two so they won't recruit you. Too damn afeard he was. Apparently he cut off his two fingers so they wouldn't recruit him. And sure enough, if you look closely at Dune's hand during the quest and the cutscenes, you'll actually see he is missing two fingers. Or Someone one and a half by the looks of it. So I just I think torch, this to attention off. to detail is to incredible you. and I was really impressed alive that the developers the actually edited the character model of this one NPC just so it would make perfect sense and it's just like true believable immersion. If that's not attention to detail, I don't know what is. But this quest goes on with the next detail on this list, the fourth detail in fact, because once we head to the battlefield and search it, we'll eventually find Dune's brother, who is not so dead after all. In fact, he's actually here holed up in this old wooden cabin. And he was saved, it turns out, by a Nilfgaardian, the enemy. Now you have an option here, you can either suggest for him to take the Nilfgaardian into his home, considering he saved his brother, or you can just leave him here to die, saying it's too dangerous. Now if we choose to leave him, obviously he dies. If we choose the second option to take him though, you'll later find all of them here on the map, east from White Orchard, living happily ever after as farmers. Which I thought was a really cool detail that they actually kind of finished off the story. The NPCs didn't disappear from the game, they actually came back, moved to a new location and started farming the fields together. However, there is actually a third choice too. In fact, it's not really a choice, it's what happens if you don't even do the quest and you continue playing the game. It almost punishes you, to be honest. If you ignore the quest entirely and never finish it or start it, and then return to White Orchard later and come to this same hut later on in the game, it's located just here on the map, what you'll instead find here is the bodies of both Bastion and Rosin. Now it seems by doing nothing, you have killed them both which is another really immersive part of The Witcher 3 and considering most people who do this quest will never bother coming back here to check the hut because there's no reason for them to and even if they did they wouldn't actually know what happened here. To many game developers that detail would be considered a complete waste of time but I was super impressed to find CD Projekt Red included it in the game so I am massively impressed. Like the video for that one guys. But finally we have the fifth detail on this list, a little easter egg that I think many people have probably missed, especially if you haven't played previous Witcher games. The Frying Pan Thief quest. Now this quest is started here on the map and to many it may seem like a very pointless quest. Basically you just need to help this poor old woman who describes two men going into this wooden shack here on the beach and only one coming out in the morning. Apparently they also took her frying pan, like though we don't currently know why. So, so if we go inside and investigate the house, you'll find the rusty old pan is no longer rusty because it's been used to create ink to write papers, some of which are burnt in the fire. If you have a look at the papers by the fire, you actually see you can read some of them still. And if you read this entry, you can clearly tell that it's been written by a spy who is attempting to write reports on the movements of the Nilfgaardian forces 
and what is very clearly confidential military secrets. The spy very clearly works for Temeria. Next though, we find him losing his monocle. Rotted. And some old scars, kind of soldier might have. Which you'll also find on the floor here, though it is quite easy to miss. Cracked monocle. Interesting. Now the monocle is a dead giveaway here if you've played the previous Witcher games, because who is the only spy we know who is Temerian and who wears a monocle? Bernard Ducat, of course, or Thala as he likes to be called, a character from the previous Witcher games. His writing style also fits perfectly with the flippant, funny swearing and curtness of Bernard, and I'm sure if you reread this letter again you will agree. I thought this was a really cool hidden detail though that was very easy to miss, but if you guys want to see more hidden details from The Witcher 3, check out the playlist below because this is the first of many videos to come my friend, and if you don't want to miss the latest Witcher content when it comes out, don't forget to subscribe and also press the bell icon, and then YouTube will let you know as soon as I do those videos and they're released. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye.